it's not homeschool. It's really similar, but it's not homeschool. It's online school and it's amazing. Hey guys, today I'm going to be getting real about my experience with cyber schooling, specifically with the Stanford University Online High School, otherwise known as either OHS or SOHS. For those of you who might be wondering what the heck cyber schooling even is, it's just school on this guy right here. Like with all my videos, this isn't sponsored by Stanford Online or anything like that. This is just my honest opinions and experience since I've mentioned going there in a few of my videos so far and I wanted to go into more detail for you guys. Now, I know a lot of people here going to school online and immediately visions start dancing in their heads of social recluses who lurk on t internets 24-7 and are either totally clueless or super geniuses with bow ties and suspenders and I'm here to tell you yeah, basically that's all true. Like, 100%. In actuality, online school is honestly fantastic. I actually attended OHS all the way from 7th grade through 12th grade since they have a middle school and a high school. They also have part-time options, so that's how I started out in my first year, and then for the next five years, I was full-time, baby! Huh. That didn't feel as cool as I thought it would. I was homeschooled before I started OHS, and I still did most of my classes online, but it was a very different atmosphere. Now, I realize you guys are probably thinking, Crystal, wait a minute, this online school thingy you're describing, it still sounds like school at home. School at home as in home school, yes? But hear me out, it's not homeschool. It's really similar, but it's not homeschool. It's online school, and it's amazing. Back when I was officially homeschooled, I took classes from all these different online course providers and it was a really fun, but also pretty packed work experience. I got to accelerate on my own pace and take all these different and interesting classes in subjects like critical thinking and linguistics, and I also got to indulge all my hardware fixations. Like, I was definitely that horse girl when I was little, and being homeschooled gave me the time and flexibility I needed to just amass all the horse knowledge. But then when I really started going to OHS full time, it was quite different. The classes were still online, and yes, I technically did still do them at home, but all of a sudden I was going to an accredited school with standards and community and graduation requirements, oh my. The class formatting wasn't terribly different, since OHS offers live online classes and I had had quite a bit of experience with that in the past. Now, I've come to realize that one of the first things that everyone asks when I tell them that I went to an online school is, what did that actually look like in practice? So, I'm going to walk you guys through just that. This is taken from the OHS website, and I remember this day, actually. This was during one of our student life assemblies, when we would raise our hands and come up on camera and just show off the Stanford gear that we were wearing for, like, school spirit points. Now, okay, you guys. Let's do something that's very much in the whole spirit and vibe of OHS. OHS is a very academic school, so let's do a close reading of this picture. My English teachers would be so proud. So to the right of everyone's beautiful faces, you can see that people are sending instant messages to the group in what we at OHS call the text chat. It's essentially like a really big, really good quality version of Skype. Second, let me point out this teeny tiny little guy all the way over in the upper left. See that? That's an icon of a teeny tiny guy with his hand raised. And the person raising that hand is one of the students with his camera on because at OHS we press buttons to let everyone know when we're raising our hands to solve problems or ask questions or add a comment. We also have icons for giving thumbs up if we agree with something, a thumbs down if we don't, laughing face if something funny happens, which trust me, it does. All the time. Or a little applause button, like for after someone's given a presentation or something. Which, let me tell you, is another fabulous perk of these online classrooms. Allow me to demonstrate with another handy snapshot. You just upload a PDF or PowerPoint or Keynote file, pick your poison, and suddenly we have visuals to complement what the teacher is saying. Sometimes students will be assigned to present on material, like a chapter from a textbook or analysis of anything from detective fiction to a historical event, and a big part of that entails making the actual PowerPoint or whatever presentations, which, yay for getting children involved in technological literacy! 
I got really into this in my senior year and started putting more time than I probably should have into making my presentations really stinking pretty, but hey, that's just another quirk of online school. There's no judgment that really happens when it comes to how you look or what you're wearing since we're all basically just a bunch of floating heads and shoulders, so you have to get creative if you want to show off. I've got to say though, that really is one of the best parts about OHS. Sure, you can call online school or tournaments all you want, but it really does eliminate a lot of the crap from traditional middle and high schools, or brick and mortar schools as we online schoolers like to call them. I was at OHS for six years. I was 18 when I graduated, so I was there for a third of my life. And while I was there, I witnessed exactly two instances of bullying. Obviously not everyone there is a perfect angel or anything like that, but the people there are remarkably accepting. Some of that probably comes from OHS's application process, which is fairly intensive, but there's something to be said for not being able to bully someone else based on what their clothes look like or their socioeconomic background. The thing is, if you're going to an online school, particularly an online school with as much a reputation for academic rigor as OHS, you're probably not going to bully someone else for being a nerd, you feel me? If you're someone who actually enjoys school and maybe is really interested in something like the stars or ancient civilizations or some kind of bug that like three people in the world know about, it's nice to feel like you're surrounded by people your own age who get that and are trying to lift you up instead of drag you down. For people who take those kinds of interests to a whole nother level, OHS is also super accommodating. For instance, there were a lot of child actors when I was there. Isabel Berman, the girl who played Clove in the movie adaptation of The Hunger Games, went there, and so does at least one Disney Channel actor. There are also people there who are engaging in really time-consuming scientific research on really cool topics like astronomy or marine biology, or people like me, who were dedicated concert musicians in high school. One of my friends from OHS, with whom I'm still really close today, practiced piano four hours a day while we were in high school. Because OHS is an international school, they have classes at all times throughout the day instead of having students go from period 1 to period 2 to period 3 to, well, you guys get the idea. So for example, I would have AP US History at 9.30 in the morning and then maybe bio at 11.15 and math that later that evening. Classes at OHS are usually 75 minutes long, though some of them are 90 minutes, and they're on a block schedule, which means that some of them meet Mondays and Wednesdays, and others meet Tuesdays and Thursdays. Fridays are reserved for pub meetings and assemblies. Personally, I really liked the structure because it mimics a college schedule and prepares you really well in that regard. Plus, the classes do tend to give a lot of homework, so having an extra day in between was always kind of a relief. Though I do have to admit to waking up really early in the mornings before my earlier classes to complete what I hadn't finished the night before, which is a rite of passage all OHS students go through. That and submitting their homework to the course website at 11.59pm when the deadline was midnight. So that brings me to what the classes are actually like there. Now, I'm not gonna lie, OHS is a pretty difficult school. I don't have the official statistics or anything, but I did go there for six years and I'd be willing to bet that the top two reasons why students leave the school is either because they were lonely or because it was a lot more work than they thought it was going to be. OHS also has a core sequence which consists of one class each year in grades 9 through 12 and alternately complaining and rhapsodizing about it is like the defining element of an OHS education. At the same time though, the classes are just so unbelievably interesting, and because OHS doesn't constrain you to only taking courses that are at your grade level, there's a ton of room for exploration. In addition to obviously all the standard reading, writing, and arithmetic courses, I got to take classes like Designing Your Life, Leadership Course Seminar, Creative Writing, and the PS de Resistance, Advanced Topics in Spanish Sociolinguistics. That one was fun. And OHS goes way beyond APs to offer university level courses in a ton of subjects. Personally, I was able to take classes in English, History, Bio, Philosophy, and Spanish at the college level by the time I graduated. And the thing is, the teachers are absolutely amazing. Most of them have PhDs, so they're insanely knowledgeable about the subjects that they're teaching. And if you go to their office hours, which they have in the live online classrooms, then you get to just talk with them about the nerdiest stuff imaginable, which it's just nirvana if you're into that sort of thing. 
Now, you guys know that I have my academic consulting business, but what I haven't really mentioned on this channel before is that I'm also running a school here in New Jersey, and I'm working with my old Spanish teacher from OHS because we just worked together for five years and built this amazing close relationship over all the years that I was at OHS and studied with her as a teacher. And that's the kind of crazy close relationships that you can make there that I personally don't think that you can really find anywhere else. Now, teachers at OHS are pretty chill as a general rule, which usually means that they'll give you an extension on an assignment if you need one, or help you out when you're struggling. And you can also go to the Writing and Resource Center if you need help, or get in touch with a peer tutor, a teaching associate, or a student ambassador. I was all of those last three things when I was at OHS, which meant that I had my own tutoring slots during the week and my own office hours over Skype, and I talked at online live open houses for prospective families who were considering OHS. And ever since graduating, I've still stayed really close with just people at OHS and that whole community, and so I'm always definitely still happy to talk about it and answer any questions. And to this day, I still tutor lots of OHSers and work with them on academic consulting and college counseling. There are a few classes at OHS that are referred to as the ones that quote unquote break your brain because they completely change your worldview in the best ways possible. At one point while I was there, Niche listed us as the number two best high school in America and say what you will about Niche, but that did do a lot for us. I think that really the way that the classes expanded my mind really opened up a lot of experiences and opportunities for me, like the Telluride Association's homework program and eventually getting accepted to Columbia University. Now, a video on OHS or any other online school wouldn't be complete without addressing the issue of loneliness. I was really lucky in that both my parents were from home and I had a twin who was going through all of this right along with me. We had both been homeschooled for pretty much our entire lives up until that point, so we were used to it by then. However, I did meet a lot of people at OHS who found it to be pretty socially isolating. OHS does a good job of making sure that there are a lot of regional meetups and people get to have this strong sense of community. There are lots of in-person meetups, both official and unofficial, and people are really active on Skype, and Discord, and Instagram. There's a big graduation ceremony each year at the Stanford campus, and there's summer at Stanford, which lasts for a few weeks in late summer, and it gives OHS students the chance to fly into the Stanford campus and take in-person classes with actual OHS teachers with their actual classmates, and so they really get to foster that sense of tight-knit community. We have a confessions page on Insta, just like every other high school. But if you don't have something like an outside extracurricular activity that brings you into contact with other people on a regular basis, it can be pretty isolating. Like for me, I played in something like four different orchestras while I was in high school, so that definitely gave me the chance to see other people, other young musicians with the same interests as me, and have that kind of human interaction. But also, I was lucky in that I was okay with doing school from home. Some people aren't, and that's completely okay. However, I do think it's incredibly sad that there are students at OHS who love their classes and love the teachers, but they feel like they have to leave because of this one thing. That's actually why I'm starting my own school, where students are able to bring their computers and take their online classes, but they're doing that at a physical campus where they can be with their friends every day. I'll put more info into the description box for those of you who want to learn more about that. I have to say that I do wish I had access to a physical community like that when I was at OHS. I was willing to make those sacrifices, but it would have been even better if I hadn't had to. I know a lot of people at OHS who felt the exact same way when I was there, so that's why I'm working to make that a reality. So as this video is winding down to its end, I thought it would be fun to finish off with a lightning round about why OHS is ultimately awesome. Here we go. You get to stay in your pajamas all day. The teachers actually care about you. It prepares you for college. You get to geek out so hard, literally all the time. Being nice is actually, like, a thing. You get to spam text chat with your friends during assemblies. You can spend more time with your families and pets, because who are we kidding? Who doesn't want to spend more time with their pets? So there you have it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know down in the comments below if you guys would ever want to go to an online school, or if you like the school that you're at. The OHS application is actually open now through March 15th, so feel free to email me with any questions you might have. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter to stay up to date. 
thanks again, you guys. I love you all. Bye. I was going to an actual accredited school. All of a sudden, I was going to an I was going to an accredited I was going to an accredited school. Accredited. Wow. That is a hard word to say. There were a lot of child actors when I was there. There were a lot of the P.S. de Resistance. The P.S. de Resistance. P.S. de Resistance. P.S. de Resistance. P.S. de Resistance. Resistance. And the P.S. de Resistance.